So these are all of the meals, their bed number. So for bed seven, right, because the child is one years old, they've ordered broccoli and fish bihun soup for today, together with puree food. Bed 14, chicken kuei tiao. This patient actually has allergy to shellfish. So this patient actually requested for no salt and no seasoning. This patient, right, she actually has seafood allergy. We have no fish as well. Correct. We have only served four meals and every single meal is different. One mistake and it could go all wrong. For the first time, cameras are given access to the kitchen operations of Singapore's largest women and children's hospital. And I'll get to see how food is prepared for a thousand daily. I'm Genevieve Lee. People call me Jen. I was the runner-up of the very first season of MasterChef Singapore. And since then, I've started my own bakery where I bake 2,000 donuts a day. But that's nothing compared to what I'm about to experience. Ah, I'm not used to like a super big walk. In this series, I'll be exploring the business of big batch cooking. Wait, did he just say I can't taste? I thought we finished breakfast no, already. Now we still need to prepare a final pack breakfast for KKH stuff. I'll reveal what it takes to feed thousands with quality food on time and within budget. I'm at the Kandang Kabao Women's and Children's Hospital, or KKH for short. At any one time, there are around 500 women and children staying in this place, the size of nearly seven soccer fields. Thankfully today, I'm not here to see the doctor. Chef? Hi, morning. Hi, morning. Yeah. I'm Jen. Hi. Hi. So what are we doing this morning? Yeah, we need to prep all the breakfast. So you just follow me and go and push up everything and we put in the steamer. Chef Alvin is the first person here at 4.30 every morning. He sets up the kitchen before his staff arrives an hour later. We need to steam egg, ham, omelette, everything for the breakfast. How big is the kitchen team? We have six chefs. These six chefs will need to cook for 500 patients and 500 staff meal every day. 1,000 1, per day. People. You have such a lean team, right? How do you cook? Every single chef has to double up. So including myself, have to double up. The size of the big and big, our people will be smaller and more small. We have to mix up about 2,000 more food every day. It includes the doctors, the patients, the staff, the canteen. Every person will be trained to learn which department can be used. For example, he can learn to cook food, he can learn to cook food. On top of preparing 2,000 meals a day, the kitchen also offers variety. This means patients can choose from six options. Hence, this lean team needs to be extremely versatile. This morning, Chef Alvin is in charge of the Western breakfast. So now we need to do the fried egg, okay? Fried egg is sunny side up or It's omelet. a normal omelette. Okay, okay. Because there's an uncle patient. Most of the stuff we do fried egg without any ingredient. For the alaka egg class patient, we have a tomato omelette. Unless there's a special request. In a kitchen, right, it's already hard enough that we have to cater for vegetarians, vegetarians, but for them, they have to do Haitian meals. So things that they cannot eat, we also have to take note. So it's quite stressful. Yeah. 
At 5.30 a.m., the rest of the kitchen crew gets to work. They have an hour to prepare the breakfast, which has to be served by 6.30 a.m. Unlike F&B outside of hospital setting, in the hospital we have strict requirements to serve meals on time. Some patients may need to take their meals together with the medication and for that we cannot afford any delays. Kitchen operations have to run like clockwork. Is the children's menu different from the adult? It's almost the same. Last time they have a different menu. Now I try to streamline everything. Most of the things that is liked by both children and adults. 我刚开始来到这间医院的时候，我看了他们的菜单，碰到很就是说啊，大人是大人，小孩子是小孩子。以我的经验，在酒店的话，在俱乐部做，我觉得说我能把这些菜单，大人跟小孩子联合起来，而
Last curry puff is out. My next task is to help in the Malay kitchen. Hi Chef Zaki. I got your beef slice here. Okay. What are we doing today? Today do the Malay kuchi. Mm -hmm. So now we must stand by around 100 people like that. Anything I have to look out for? Uh, yeah, I have some diabetic diet today. Therapeutic diets are customised to address the specific dietary needs of patients with conditions like gout, renal failure, cancer and diabetes. Meals for diabetics have to be cooked separately because of the stringent portion control and specific ingredients. I've asked Chef Zaki to show me what it takes to prepare meals for the diabetics in this hospital. So these are the ingredients that is portioned out for diabetic patients. Uh, yeah. On the menu today is beef samo, an Indonesian meat stew braised in dark brown sauce. The same dish served to the rest of the patients features ketchup manis and Indonesian sweet sauce. Chef, so what should we look out for when cooking the diabetic meal? For the diabetic meal, mm. you cannot put the sugar, the sauce or everything, the, the sweet one cannot. Oh, uh -huh. then how do we season it then? Only salt, pepper. How about soy sauce? Soy sauce also cannot. Soy sauce cannot? Uh -huh. Is it because there's a bit trace sugar uh, inside? Yeah. Instead, Chef Zaki uses aromatics such as spices, onions and garlic to enhance the flavour of this special beef samoa. Now we prepare the vegetable. The green beans. Yeah, we can mix onion and carrot. So for the diabetic menus, is there some fruits or vegetables that you have to avoid? Actually, carrot only a bit, only cannot too much. Oh. To further regulate sugar levels, the kitchen controls the portions of starchy vegetables. This is because the carbohydrates in items like potatoes and corn can significantly impact blood sugar levels. It is quite restrictive. The things that you can't really put inside, I'm here to just be the hands of the chef to cook. He's adding in the quantities so that I don't mess up and Maybe put a bit too much sugar in their meal. This is the responsibility of the chef. The chef is the one who is the one who is the one who is the one who is You can see, right? This is the same beef dish, but he's adding oyster sauce, so, uh, duck sauce, spices, duck soy sauce, and what? Ketchup mani soy sauce, right? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. It is so different from like the diabetic meal. So we're making some cornstarch to make into a slurry. So I guess for the diabetic meal, couldn't make a slurry because flour or cornstarch has more sugars inside as well. Correct, Chef? Yes. Yes! It took us an extra 20 minutes to prepare the regular and diabetic Malay meal separately. By 10 a.m., lunch is ready, a good half hour before they are belted. This time is set aside for dietitians to check that chefs adhere to therapeutic diet guidelines and to ensure that meals are assigned to the correct patients. At the building area, if there's any uh, special diet order, right, the dietitian will actually use the weighing skill to actually weigh out the food appropriately. Samples will be uh, kept aside just in case if there's any food poisoning. The type of diets that are ordered for the patient are printed on a meal slip. So in the building area, we actually got a caller. They actually call out like you know what dish is to be plate for the patient. <laughs> They have to make sure that they actually pick the right dishes for the right meal order. The last person at the uh, belting area, so she's actually the checker. So she checked the meals before the meals are put inside the food warmer. So there's always one person who's in charge of testing everything? Yes, correct. When a meal doesn't meet the stringent guidelines, it is returned and a particular dish must be cooked again. 
While lunch is being rolled out to the patients, lunch is also being prepared for the doctors. This one is especially for doctors, for operating theatre. So we need to prepare the food for them. When they are free, then they'll come and take a food. Chef, is the doctor's menu different from patient's menu? Yes, it's different. Chef, don't you feel so like stressed and exhausting to be cooking for so many people, the doctors, patients and even your staff as well? In fact, it's quite stressful and very challenging, but it's quite meaningful also. Like, not every single hospital do cook for doctors also. So it's like we provide a service to the doctors, uh, cook something nice for them also. Uh. Any doctors come up to you before and say, Oh, Chef, I really love your food. Eh. Most of it is uh, they will go through the feedback through the email. That's very nice. <laughs> Surgeons' meal times vary based on their surgery schedules. So, 200 bento boxes must be delivered to the operating theatre by 11 am. I feel like Chinese cooking, right? It's the most intense cooking. I'm really setting like my first dish. <laughs> to head back into the kitchen for the last service of the day. Dinner. The Chinese cuisine is one of the most popular foods ordered by the patients here in KKH. Every meal, the kitchen receives 100 to 120 orders for Chinese food. I feel like Chinese cooking, right? It's the most intense cooking. I'm really setting it's like my first dish. <laughs> and for food served to new mothers, some extra care is taken. Okay, next is stir fried chicken. Garlic. Ginger. Ginger. Yes. For ginger, why we we'll add a bit more? Because all this dish is going for the confinement lady. Those are giving birth. So we are cooking for confinement lady? Yes. Ginger actually in Chinese culture is to clear away the wind after you give birth. You will need to have wine, sesame oil. We make sure to see that everything is being cooked. Okay. We won't take the risk in hospital, everything has to be 100% cooked. There is no way you can eat sunny side up. Oh no! <laughs> We still need to prepare the confinement soup okay. for today. So today we have chicken with ginseng. Chef Alvin curates the double boiled soups that are served to the confinement women. For confinement lady soup, we will take into consideration a more nourishing food. Lah. Fish papaya help them to build up their blood, their milk. But creating these special soups adds a layer of complexity to the big batch cooking process. They need to be boiled bowl by bowl before steaming for two hours. So to ensure the kitchen handles this extra task, the soup stock is prepared ahead of time every morning. Okay, so you need to uh, pour the soup. All the way. Yeah. So when everything is done, we need to wrap it up and uh, we put into the oven okay. to steam. The kitchen team has been at it since 5.30 a.m and by 2 p.m. dinner is ready. The food is then kept in food warmers at 85 degrees until the browning of dinner begins at 3.30 p.m. 30 minutes before dinner is served. I've changed out of my chef jacket but my work is not done yet. I'm heading to my least favourite part of the kitchen which is the dishwashing area. Hey, oh here, here's God. your PPE. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. While the kitchen crew knocks off for the day, I'm joining the eight men cleaning crew. We bring out each tray here, segregate the cover here, and this one, the waste food, is over here, and the fruit also throw here, the plastic, plastic throw over here. 
There's a reason why the food waste is stored in this container. The food is like not touched at all. Yeah, because the patient maybe no appetite. Okay. Ah. So Does it always happen? Very seldom also. So once this bin is filled, what happens to this? This food we will bring behind and do very so how much of this bin do you feel? It's roughly two to two and a half container. Every uh, meal? Each meal. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, we can go by this way. Okay. okay. This is the place where we need to do the measurement, uh, weighing of the food okay. here. We have to carry and put it here. <laughs> you can see here 22.30. 22.3 kg. Yeah. Trusty, why is it necessary to weigh all the food waste? We want to know what are the things are wasting. It can be fish, chicken, veggie, all this. Mm -hmm. So that uh, we can feedback to chef. Like identify which dishes not yeah, so popular. From, because every day we are doing this, we will know what are the items is being um, not eaten. Gathering this data helps the kitchen adjust the amount of food they cook so that food waste is reduced. Josty and her team have been tracking this since 2018. Over the years, the kitchen has successfully reduced food waste by nearly 45%. It feels like in the KKH kitchen and honestly, it's not something that I expected. Ah! Of course, I knew I'm going to cook for patients. There's going to be some dietary requirements that I have to adhere to. But the amount of menu items and the varieties that they offer here is insane. And not just the variety of the menu, they also have to cater to the stringency of all of the restrictions like the dietary allergies and every single meal is actually customised to each patient. At the end of the day, even though it's a very tiring day, it has been a very fulfilling experience for me.